as you rightly said, things are moving really fast. Organizations need to make sure that their investments don't become obsolete. Why is future proofing such a big concern for MCP deployment today? And what risks do companies run if they don't build for adaptability in future? I don't think that any of us have, have seen um, a technology like this move as quickly as as, as um, there's nothing like it kind of in history in terms of the speed. It's it's really funny because I feel like every week or two kind of there's yet another uh, coding agent that's basically the top of the heap, right? Just today I discovered droids. Now it's the top of the heap and Codex just was took the throne from Cloud Code like two weeks ago, right? So it's it's just everything is changing so fast right now that it's it's really hard to make a bet. So you're betting on AI and you're betting on AI agents, but you don't want to bet on specific technology. So what we're trying to bring you is a framework so that you can easily kind of extend it. You can easily swap components out. You start with one registry and then MCP registry drops. You take, we help you take that old registry out and migrate it to MCP registry and you keep on moving forward, basically using whatever the open standard de facto uh, winner is at the time. Gardner predicts that 40% of agentic AI projects could fail by 2027 due to unclear ROI and escalating cost. How does adaptive ops help enterprises avoid such failure? Um, so there's a few ways in which we're going to do that. Um, so first of all, um, we are going to have a set of training and educational services that uh, come with MCP Adaptive Ops so that we can actually help you think through your AI agents and your strategy there. Um, the second is that we can work with you on how you are sort of triaging the applications that you are going to or use cases that you're going to start looking at first, right? So it reminds me again of the cloud native days, right? In those early cloud native days, there were a lot of failures because there were attempts to take brownfield applications that wouldn't necessarily work well on something like AWS and just move them over without re-architecting that. In this case, there's a different set of criteria because some brownfield applications do make sense, as well as some greenfield applications for Agentic. But you need help from somebody who's got real world experience and can see kind of what's going on in the marketplace across many, many customers to help you discern kind of how you would triage and prioritize your use cases inside your enterprise and figure out how to kind of go kind of uh, step one, step two, step three, step four. It's just like with cloud native where kind of that first step is do the most basic thing where you get the learning around what agents are for. And then step two is you go into kind of the next set, right? Which is if it was cloud native, it would be like, how do you do scale out properly, right? And then step three is the next kind of like evolution beyond that. And so what we see is some some customers try to jump all the way and and then they 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 get themselves in trouble because they're trying to go too far too fast you have to kind of you're you're adding new dna and you're and you're adjusting the culture inside the business so you need a trusted partner who's basically had that experience like we did with openstack and private and public cloud and then again with kubernetes and cloud native later on 